What's up, everybody? Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Carl Watson. I'm a producer and a DJ from Johannesburg in South Africa. Um, I just put out my first ever full length album called Into the Morning. And um, yeah, it's it's available everywhere. And I'm about to show you a little bit of uh, studio work that went into one of the tracks called Sit Down. Um, and it's kind of like a kind of like a groovy kind of track. It's got quite a cool energy. And um, if you, this is what it sounds like. The mastered version, obviously. Shut up. So yeah, you can hear that it's got like quite a shuffly sort of vibe. Um, there's a lot of swing going on and everything. And so this is the uh, this is the session. I'm sorry if I'm a little bit slow on this because I'm usually using two different screens, but everything's on one screen now. Um, uh, yeah, I think the best way to go through this would probably to just sort of show you an overview of the session um, and then go through each of the different, either the buses or the, the tracks one by one. This is what the session looks like, which is a, my way of sort of figuring out what everything is, is to use colors and the reds are the drums, the blues are the basses, the greens are synths and all that kind of stuff. The yellows are anything vocal. So, I mean, that'd be like full vocals if it's a full vocal track or, or little snips, snippets and stuff, which is what this is. And then gray down here are effects. So, um, yeah, I'll go through the sort of the processing on each of these things. I suppose you could start with the um, with the drums. Basically, almost all of my tracks, I'll set the kick drum up as its own, the subs of the kick drum as its own kind of um, VST. So in this case, I've used a synth called Big Kick, which allows me to get my subs. And if you listen through to it, it just really allows you to dial in and tune your kick to exactly what you need. So in this case, uh, this kick is tuned somewhere around G sharp one. And it's it's got like, it carries all of the weights that the entire kick needs. And then I'll always, I'll also use that as a foundation and then I'll always layer that with something. So in this case, I've got a few um, VSTs layered on top of that, that, that fill the drums out. Perhaps I should actually just play you the full drum bass just so that you can hear it all. Then obviously gets a bit fuller in some parts. So a couple of extra hats, a couple of extra snary type things there. Yeah, so to get to get all of that kind of happening, I've got obviously the subs from the big kick, and then I'm layering it up with that's one of the, the kicks that gets layered on top. A couple of little pieces of perk here. Um, very little actually coming from the polyplex. So it's just performing, giving a little bit of a layer to the kick and then obviously the hats and a little a little finger snap on the, on the claps. And if you listen to that with the, the weight of the kick, it's giving the kick a little bit of a transient. And then further to that, I've also got, which I always use for my, my drum sounds, is battery for native instruments which adds another, another layer to snap on that kick. And the actual main sound of the, the clap comes from this battery as well. And that's, that clap is coming mainly from... So this is panned hard right. Uh, that's panned hard left. It's actually the same sample. It's called the Haas effect. Um, one of them is panned hard left, one panned hard right, and one of them is set tuned down or up 
a couple of semitones, one or two semitones. And when you play them together, it's it really widens the stereo sound of that clap. So it gives me like a bit of a layer um, to the side of the primary clap. And then I've obviously got this snary kind of sound, which is kind of it gives a main sound of the clap. So um, if we put all of those together, you can kind of hear how, how it like, sounds like a cohesive kit. So yeah, everything kind of comes together in, in that sense. Um, if I just jump into um, the way Polyplex is, is set up here, it's set up to output on the mixer over here. And all I've done with that is a sample obviously had a bunch of subs in it, which I didn't want to um, interfere with the subs I created on Big Kick. And so I just roll everything, everything out of that kick. So if we listen to it without that roll off, it's got a couple of subs here, which I don't want to interfere with the Big Kick. So I'll just get rid of them. And the same thing as the dot kick on battery. So here I've got a little bit of EQing going. If I quickly mute all of the EQs, you can hear. And there's a whole bunch of subs here, but those are taken away. Plus I've got a little bit more rolling off here just to make sure that everything has gone out of the subs there. That's our main snare sound. Try to find it here. I've also got some EQing going on here. I've also warmed the sound up with a native instrument supercharger, which is kind of like a, it's a compressor, but it's also got a really cool color to it. You can saturate your sound, uh, which is what I've done here. I've dialed up the saturation a bunch just to take the edge off of it and give it a little bit of warmth. I haven't got any compression happening on this, this particular um, sample. Um, and then I've just used this dial here, this character dial, which is really nice. And it also just warms it up a little bit more. Um, and just gives it a pretty cool sound. And then I've I've added a little bit of transient snap to it. So it, it punches through um, when it hits. And then I've just pulled the sustain down a little bit just so that it's, it doesn't decay for so long. So if we just listen to the, the sample, let me turn these off. Let me turn the EQ off as well. This is what it sounds like raw. So you can hear there's a whole bunch of low end frequencies there that I don't want. Chuck those out, um, warm it up, spreads it out a little bit, gritties it up a bit, and then the snap, the snap. All right. And then uh, what I've got down here is just a bunch of loops that I, like uh, I'm always a big fan of, of filling out drums with loops. What I've got here, Is a sort of tweaked out loop that I found. We listen to the raw version. So it's pretty cool by itself, but I mean, I didn't really want to use it like that. I wanted it to kind of fulfill a different purpose and just kind of be on a hats kind of level. So with the EQ on, I've pulled out all of the all of the spiky frequencies over here, rolled down a little bit over there, and then everything off the low end. And then uh, once again, I've I've used a really, really cool uh, plugin here, which I only found recently called Stereo Savage. And what it does is it's, it basically takes a mono signal or anything, anything really mono or stereo and just spreads it out like mad. Um, so if I actually turn that off, and then I've got a, just a really simple bit, bit crusher, which I end up using quite a lot nowadays just to gritty things up. And then a very, very clever tool from Native Instruments, which is almost like a side chain, but it's, it's automatic. So it's not actually triggered by anything. So we've got that as well. We've got quite a simple shuffly kind of hi-hat loop, um, open hats. Once again, also just really quiet there. I mean, that's really, really quiet in the mix. It's just filling up a little bit of space and then a 909 hat which comes in a bit later and we've got quite a cool i mean i called it breathing but i think it was initially some kind of a 
some kind of a drum loop or something. But if we just solo this, this is also going to uh, go into the drum bus. If we listen to that raw, add some EQ. And the effects chain. Once again, this is also helping with sort of the stereo width of of the drum bus. This is another. This is a Waves plugin, and it just sends the signal forwards and backwards and left and right at the same time, so you can actually see very organic kind of sound, and it it helps to add a little bit of width to everything, which is which is definitely what you want in a drum mix. Um, so if we listen to this part of the drum mix loop. Very quick, very quantized, very snappy kind of um, kind of vibe coming from all the drums. Let me just show you my um, my drum bus. So obviously, all of the drums that I that I um, played earlier, they're all being rooted to um, to a drum bus, a central drum bus. And on that drum bus, I'm just working really hard to warm the sound up and everything. So I've got a Sound Toys Radiator, which is adding a little bit of warmth. I've got um, a bit of parallel compression going on here just to bring up the quieter parts and make it feel make it feel nice and full, also adding a lot of character, but not not dialing it up to 100% wet, in fact, using only 32% of the wet signal in that. And then I've actually got a dynamic EQ, which is just taming a little bit of the sub frequencies in the kick drum, because I tend to mix the kick drum pretty loud. Um, I like to get the sound and then kind of bring it back down. And then uh, just uh, enhanced EQ from Native Instruments, which helps to brighten up the airy frequencies of the uh, of the drum mix. Um, if you listen to it without all of that processing, and then with it on, so you can really hear how it starts coming through. Um, yeah, jumping onto the onto the bass bus. Once again, I've, I set all the bases to um, go through one one channel. And on that channel, I'll do a sort of similar signal chain to the drum bus, depending on the kind of track it is. But in, yeah, in this case, we've got the radiator again, grittying it up. We've got a, um, a VC2A compressor, which is just helping to crunch everything together. And uh, we've got the F6 stereo, which is actually a multi-band side chain. And the signal is, is being driven by the kick. So. That's the kick dipping down. So instead of sucking the entire signal down majorly, you're just actually pulling out those low frequencies. Um, after all of that, it's going through that same pumper, which is just very subtly, just a, a few dBs, um, just ducking on every beat. If we listen to all the basses together, Here I've got a saturated 808, which I actually used a synth by um, output, yeah, um, called Substance. And it's just got some really, really cool um, tape sub stuff. In fact, all of the sub stuff on here is great. Um, and I just, well, I knew that I wanted just a simple note to land on the beginning of every eight beats just to initiate the, the bass pattern. And I knew that I, I wanted just a really simple saturated really simple saturated bass sound. So that just, that hits on the first note. And then I've got a little, yeah, I made this in massive. It's very, very simple. I mean, it's a, it's a square wave tuned down two octaves um, that just fills in, uh, fills in a little bit of a, a subby note. I've added a, um, a pitch envelope to it so that it gives you a little bit of a, a little bit of a transient, like the pitch starts really high, 56 semitones above 24, and then quickly ducks down. Um, the cutoff is just pulled down a little bit. And then the wow, wow bass <laughs> is something I created in Serum. which is like quite a cool modulate sort of bass, also cut off, pulled down quite a bunch. Um, and this LFO here is just sweeping across, maybe this one, LFO2, sweeping across the wavetable posi uh, position of this um, 
sub you saw wavetable. So you can see if I spread it out more. So that was that was pretty cool. And then I think that what I've done here, yeah, I've mapped the uh, I think that's probably the cutoff, yeah, um, and maybe one of the other of the other uh, dials onto the macro so I can open up the cutoff. Serum gives you like a really, really nice wet sound, which I'm, I, I really dig. And uh, it parts through the track, I kind of open and close it, depending on how much energy I want to bring into the, uh, into the bass bus. If you want to actually just listen to sort of the drum bus and the bass bus together. That's the basic loop of sit down um, and then we've got these kind of stabby things and pads that, that come in and out throughout the track. Sorry, there's one more bass that I haven't actually hit yet. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Let's see, okay, I made this in massive as well. Um, I usually, on like the second drop, especially in this track, I'll switch everything up. Well, not everything, but I'll change something at least. And uh, in this case, I to the bass bus, I added a, a new synth. So you can hear just everything kind of sped up a little bit. There's a couple extra notes here. I just switched up the pattern a little bit just to keep it interesting. Um, and that's, uh, let's see if we've got anything going on on the inserts here. So. Distortion again, a lot of distortion happening in this track. And then I think, yeah, I added a little bit of a, a noise oscillator on this. So without that noise oscillator, it's a much cleaner sound, which I didn't really want. Um, and as soon as you introduce that noise, it just gives it like a, a little bit of texture and grittiness, which is really cool. It works nicely in the track. Yeah, and then as I was saying, sort of the, uh, the, the pads and everything that come in and out, we've got something here, which happens just before the break, which is just like a, a fifth synth, I think. Nothing really fancy, um, only really happens at the end of sort of each phrase. We've got this sort of pad, it's an airy pad that comes in. It's also, it's really simple. Bass note stays, stays the same. Um, the top note just moves around a little bit. Which is, which is kind of cool because it works with the bass pattern because the bass pattern is very sort of monotone. And then this, this um, sequence of notes gives it a little bit more sort of movements, a bit more melody, just another sort of layer. I know we end up with just a straight up chord there. Uh, let's see, what's the sound that we're going into here? Oh, listen to that. And it's just a really weird serum sound that lands right on the drop of the uh, the second the second drop. In fact, let me actually show you the other the other synths before we move on to that. So we've got, which is really nice, and then everything breaks after that. We've got that going on, and then this would probably be the main element that you take from a second break when you hear it. Also really, really simple. Um, before I go into each of those in detail, listen to the second drop and you can understand a bit better. Yeah, so when you hear, um, when you hear all of those together, it just adds a whole bunch of energy on that second drop. Even though I've dropped in without any of the, of the hi-hats or anything like that, it's still got that energy because we have those those elements here giving it that energy. And on this, I mean the other stuff's reasonably simple, but on this, sorry, let's loop this here. So that's um, nothing too hectic. I've just got a little LFO. So this is all being controlled by, uh, let's quickly check. Yeah, so a square, a square LFO, and the 
mud. Uh, it's being linked to one of the mud wheels. Yeah. So I've just aut automated the rate of that LFO to sort of quantize it. And that's why it looks <laughs> like this because I actually came in and hand drew this stuff trying to trying to get the actual curve that I wanted because as soon as you change one of these things, see it, everything, everything changes. So if you just, if you're off by a little bit, it doesn't sound right. So yeah, I had to do that a few times to get it right. And then obviously the vocal, which <laughs> I ended up making myself uh, just because I couldn't find exactly what I needed. And if I just solo it, there's two copies. Sit down. Shut up. Let me call you a drink. I've got a ton of stuff happening here and it's terrible to hear by itself, but I'll play it for you guys anyway. Sit down. That's all it is. Ugh. Shut up. Let me buy you a drink. <laughs> um, and as soon as you put all of these things on, Ah, oh, well done. Uh, okay, we've just got some simple EQing. We've got a, quite a cool little uh, sound toy thing here, which changes the formant and the pitch of the vocal. A bit of compression, a bit of DSing, because a whole bunch of the processing brought in some sibilance. Um, and then more EQing, a tape saturator, and then the pumper at the end. The duplicate Sit down. is pretty much the same, except it's basically up an octave and the formants is up instead of down. So it gives you like this weird sort of like stereo, like two octave vocal thing, which is really strange. Sit down. Shut up. No reverb or anything at all. It's just like very, very dry, very, very short, which is kind of what I wanted because it has to fit the vibe of the whole track. So yeah, and then I used a couple of chops of those that's actually used in the uh, in the build up as well, from a structure point of view, if you listen out for these four here. Let me buy you a drink. <laughs> then it kind of keeps going for a little while. Sit down. Shut up. And you can see in this this first drop, there's just that one layer of of the vocal. And then in the uh, in the second drop, we've got the lower octave and the higher octave coming in together. So once again, just to kind of differentiate everything a little bit, uh, make the second drop slightly different to the first. And let's check what this is. Tell me know what the sound is. Yeah. All right, yeah. That I don't even know. I don't even know what that is, but I th <laughs> I think it could have been. A part of my vocal that I recorded when I was when I was doing the sit down and I've loaded it into a sampler and this is the sound. So it ended up just sounding pretty cool playing off of the um off of the bass bus particularly. So listening to the bass bus and that bop sound. So it's quite cool. It adds like a little bit of a little bit of momentum to the bass uh, to the bass pattern, which is pretty nice. There's almost no effects in this um, in this track at all. I think all I've really got here is a um, if we listen to it by itself, it's like I use it as a texture, but it's actually a, a real world recording of a bunch of samples of rocks and, and things disintegrating, rubble and stuff. And I've been using that kind of stuff a lot lately, and it's it's it comes from a, a um, like a sound pack that's got nothing to do with music. It's not it, it's post production. So um, I just kind of came across it, and these kind of things kinds of things are working really well in these kinds of tracks, especially when you know the whole vibe is sort of that gritty kind of vibe. So yeah, I mean it comes through a couple of times, and if you want to listen to it in context with the uh, the second drop. Just quickly on this this slide, so over the whole course of 
pretty much almost the whole uh, main breakdown which happens at uh, 235 we've got this note that sort of starts way up uh, let's see if we can just bring this up here way up there and just keep sliding all the way down like a whole bunch of octaves so so we've got it really up high and then it slowly dips down Yeah, and uh, that was just kind of to. I actually didn't have that in the original in the original breakdown, um, but it just sounded really empty, and it needed some kind of it needed something. Um, so in context, it's it starts over here really high, while the uh, the pad the the pad chord is going, and this little extra glass keys rhythm is going. Also, pretty simple melody starts at the top, ends at the bottom. That's pretty much it. It's really not like a, a super complicated project. Um, usually there's a whole lot more tracks here. And yeah, the, the, the structure of this track is also very simple. I mean, it drops in at 1.15 as opposed to, you know, beats ending at, at one minute and then only coming in at 1.30 or, or even 1.45 or two. And yeah, I mean, from a, from a structure point of view, two very simple breakdowns, nothing really too complicated. Sit down. Shut up. Introduce a few drum elements to get the energy building again. Sit down. And then have it all drop out just uh, two, two um, bars before. And then the second, the second uh, breakdown is also it's it kick it drops to just a simple kick, which is here you can see the sub kick and the two uh, top layers of the kick. Oh uh, yeah, you can hear where I've opened up the uh, the cutoff on that bass I was playing earlier. Got to show you this in the drums, but. This was also from that sound design packet I was talking about earlier. It's literally a bunch of gears or someone like zipping up a, something. I'm not entirely sure, but it's uh, I just kind of turned it into a rhythmic, a rhythmic um, element that you can add to the drums. So as soon as you add them all in here. Another cool, uh, another cool technique that I actually used on this synth um, that I'll show you before I finish is I actually changed the formant of the pad, which is kind of a strange thing to do, but it sounded pretty cool. And then I was able to actually automate that um, up the formant changes throughout the break. So if you listen to it by itself, you'll hear it start sounding kind of. It's quite cool because it, it changes it changes character without changing pitch, so you can keep the same chord going. And it ends up all the way here. And then drops down just before it ends. That's it down. Um, and it's one of my favorites off of the album. And uh, yeah, I hope that you guys are watching this found something useful in here. I hope you guys enjoyed it and yeah, thanks for watching.